Welcome everyone. So this is a workshop six of the Anoc Digital Accelerator Program. Uh, as usual, we do have interpretation in both uh, Spanish and French. You can just uh, click on the small globe and select the, the language that you're of your preference. The presentation will be done uh, in English. And today, uh, the theme is the social content creation part two. We're going to have our colleague Joe uh, once again with us, uh, showing how we can use PowerPoint, which is a tool that most of us have on our computers to create fantastic uh, graphic creation for social media performances, but also a lot of the lessons that uh, we have learned in the previous session and also what we have, we're going to learn today in a very practical way. You can use both for your social media uh, uh, creation, but also on your PowerPoint presentation. So we really look forward uh, for this session today with Joe. Just to run through uh, how the session is going to be structured. It is going to be a two hour session, so 120 minutes. Uh, for the first 20 minutes, uh, Joe is going to do a recap of what was uh, presented uh, and discussed during, during the first session. And after that, we're going to have a 30 minute session where uh, he's going to present how to build a design template. Design templates are important because this way uh, you produce something that you can use in different opportunities, keeping the same uh, characteristics uh, of your brand. So this is something very important to be consistent on what you present to your followers. And then he's going to present some animation techniques so giving life uh, uh, to your uh, postings, uh, everything through uh, uh, PowerPoint. And last, he's going to show us how to work with some dashboard designs. Uh, every now and then, the NOCs have some data to share or on, for example, how many medals did they win on records or performance, number of athletes, number of games. So the dashboards are a, a very nice tool to show data in a very, uh, efficient and attractive way. So uh, Joe is going to teach us how to do that uh, with PowerPoint. After this, after the, the, the content presentation, we're going to have a break of 10 minutes. And after that, we're going to run an exercise. So the exercise, we think it's important. It's part of the feedback that we got from the participants from the previous sessions to make this uh, our workshops as practical as possible. So you'll be given quite a good amount of time to, to try the lessons that Joe will be teaching you, all these new tips. And then uh, we're gonna ask you to send you the results of your work to us. And then uh, Joe will be able to uh, do the feedback on, the, on your performance and uh, give us some additional tips on what you were able to achieve. And last, we're gonna have some open feedbacks and questions. Okay, so without uh, further ado, Joe, it's up to you. Everyone, please enjoy the session and uh, do let us know if you have questions. You can use the chat and then Joe will moderate from now on. Thank you, enjoy. All right. Thank you, Gustavo, for the introduction. Now, allow me to share my screen um, first. Let me share it. Okay, and here we go. Let's get the show on the road. So, a very good uh, morning and uh, afternoon, or perhaps even evening, especially where I am here in Kuala Lumpur, it's already 7 uh, in the evening, 7 p.m. So some of your days have just started, and you're all extremely energetic and pumped up to get this underway, whereas three quarters of the day has gone by for me. But however, yeah, um, it's great to be back. I, this is my second um participation or, or you know, involvement in the Accelerator program. And I'm, I'm extremely honored to share my knowledge with you guys once again. So I also understand that some of you are perhaps joining in for the first time, uh, whereas the majority of you are coming in uh, for the second time with uh, your participation being, you know, having attended the one that, uh, that we just had in May, about two months ago. Yeah, so... Um, welcome to the new uh, welcome to the new participants. And one thing that I'm sure the the returning participants can tell you is that um, this class is unlike 
any uh, how would I say uh, tutorials or training that requires you to use a software such as Microsoft PowerPoint because basically what I do is I do not share the hows yeah I don't share the hows I share the what ifs you know so I'm sure um, everyone who's here today are extremely familiar with the basic tools of PowerPoint to build your presentations to build your documents to build um, you know submission materials and things like that but um, those who have attended my, the class three months ago would know that you know PowerPoint is actually a tool that can be uh, that can be so much more, especially in the areas of design, where you can actually design your um, images and visuals that you want to put into your social media postings and whatnot, right? So, um, so previously, uh, these are the things that we went through, right? Of course, we we. I explained a little bit about the fundamentals of uh, what constitutes as a good design, right? And then we went into the, the, the techniques of how do we convert our plain headlines or our text or our sentences into a design form, yeah? Using this, the technique of typography where the way we arrange our text um, enables our sentences or our words to become a visual element, right? And then we also shared about, um, you know, how to obtain colors that are not uh, readily available on PowerPoint. The thing about PowerPoint is that the color options, yeah, the color palette on PowerPoint itself is actually very predictable. It's very harsh sometimes. It's a bit too strong and things like that. Um, and it may not be as pretty or as, um, you know, as nice as compared to other colors and all that. So I, with the technique of how do we get colors from Google and using the functions such as the eyedropper, we were able to add, um, you know, the, the, the size of our palette to being almost infinite, right? Because the, the color options are just based on whatever images or, or palettes that we can obtain from Google. So that's um, one of the techniques that, that we shared, uh, that I shared three months ago. And then I also shared with you guys on how to create infographic placeholders yeah placeholders basically being the uh, designs or the compartments that we design to put in our icons or our uh, text and things like that to form an infographic and then we also learned about um, how do we edit images on powerpoint so rather than just inserting plain readily available pictures we can actually enhance it by removing backgrounds by changing the color schemes by doing a little bit of superimposing. So uh, that was shared as well. And then we ended the last session with um, a quick idea on how to make videos using PowerPoint, how we record the timing of uh, our slides, you know, and, and matching it with a tempo of a music that we put in it, that hence creating a video format, right? So um, that I believe was more than sufficient to give you an idea on how powerful PowerPoint really is. But now uh, what we're going to do this time around is um, we're going we're gonna to extend your knowledge base by first, I'm going to give you a few ideas on how to build a good design template. Yeah, Not just from the sizing of your, of the size of your canvas or uh, you know, the kind of colors that you should use, but also based on the placement of your content, right? So, uh, I'll try to cover as much as possible to, to um, share with you how what constitutes as a good template, right? And then we'll go into the animation techniques. So um, I'm sure everybody knows how to uh, do basic animation for your content. You know, that means for each of your words or your sentences or your pictures to come out based on your clicks or the movement of your mouse or things like that, right? But uh, I'm going to show you a few more gimmicks, a few more fancy techniques that if you were to apply this and convert your, your uh, PowerPoint slide into a video format, you can start producing really, really cool short videos for your uh, social postings. And then we're going to go into a dashboard design trick, uh, just like what Gustavo said earlier. Yeah, I'm sure uh, some, of, some of you may have some data that you like to share, you know, percentage, percentages or medal halls or um, you know, uh, 
records and things like that. So I'm going to show you how you can display that in a very dashboard looking interface, right? And using PowerPoint tools. So get ready for that. And then we'll have a creative exercise, as Gustavo said. We're going to give you a generous 40 minutes to apply all these techniques that we've learned all the way in May, uh, all the way from the first class to the ones that you're going to pick up uh, in this class itself and see what you can come up with. Yeah. So um, for those who are joining me for the first time, my name is Joe. Yeah. Uh, Joe Najib Mpol. Just call me Joe. Uh, so I'm a bit old. I'm already in my yeah, uh, 40s. So born in April, married with two beautiful daughters, and I live in Kuala Lumpur. Um, the big chunk of my years was spent in marketing and advertising. So um, as you can see, the big batch down there where, where it says Densu, Ogilvy, TBWA, these are some of the biggest uh, multinational advertising agencies that I have been attached to over uh, 15 years. Yeah. Um, so I was also part of uh, medical tourism, banking, but all in all, when I put it together, I have always been in the uh, marketing space. And throughout that time, I have built over 2,000 plus, perhaps even 3,000 um, different proposals or, or pitch, pitches and things like that, valued at over 300, uh, 000, uh, 300 million ringgit. That's about 90, 80 million USD in terms of uh, businesses for my employers. Uh, I've left all that behind. I've left my career behind to now do PowerPoint as a full-time job. Yeah. So. Some of you may think, um, how is it possible that somebody does PowerPoint for a living and does nothing else? So, well, uh, I basically train a lot of uh, corporate institutions and as well as colleges or universities, institutions of higher learning. Uh, that's one, one of my, uh, what do you call that, uh, jobs that I do. I also clean up a lot of slides that um, corporate clients send to me every time they want to do a report or they want to do a proposal or they want to do a town hall or things like that. So they will send all these 100, 200 slides for me to beautify, to standardize, to basically clean up so that it's presentation ready. And I also built uh, keynote addresses or presentations for some of the country's uh, most well-known CEOs or C-suites. Yeah, because these people, they, they get invited a lot to speak at conferences and summits and things like that. So they want their slides to look good behind them on a big stage. They will get someone, they will call me to actually design their slides. So these three verticals alone under the subject of training and beautification and, and providing keynote addresses and things like that is enough to keep me occupied all year round. Yeah, so um, I've reached that period, uh, I've reached that moment where I'm actually doing what I'm, 100% passionate about, can't complain, yeah? So, okay, um, now let's go through a quick recap of what we learned on the 10th of May, yeah? So number one was uh, me sharing how, um, you know, design is made up of a couple of elements, particularly line, shape, color, size, and space. So to go very quickly, uh, the moment how you place your lines uh, can have a, direct or indirect impact in terms of um, your, your, what kind of, what do you call that? What kind of content yeah, you'd like to display and the kind of prominence you'd like that content to be uh, visually uh, attainable by people. Next is of course the shapes, geometric, natural, abstract. Yeah? Uh, basically the categories of the different shapes that you can put in your design and, and also saying that, um, you know, try not to mix between all three elements because that is where your visuals start to look messy. The third one is of course, um, you know, in terms of colors. So knowing the difference between, you know, your RGBs, your red, greens and blues and your CMYKs, right? Those are also another element of design. And then we went into sizing, yeah? Well, of course it's, um, it's, it goes without saying that the bigger the object in your design, the more prominent uh, it is and the more eye-catching or more attention-grabbing it will be. So that size creates focus, yeah? So, and then we discussed about space, yeah, where the kind of spacing that you use, you know, whether you're generous with it or you're compressing stuff and all that, the amount of space that you put across your designs has a different 
uh, purpose or a different result as well uh, to your audience. And then we went into the subject of um, how do we play around with our headlines? Yeah. So uh, I shared very, very uh, briefly in terms of how a lot of people out there, a lot of designers out there, in the absence of pictures, they can actually convert plain text into designs using the technique of typography. Yeah. So one of the most um, common style of typography designs is to create all the sort of designs that you see here where the arrangement of the text will make your designs look like a box. Yeah, Your sentences will look like boxes and things like that. It's just the way we play with the sizing for each row of text and things like that. So for those who are, who are coming joining us for the first time, uh, the work that we did the last time around was I gave you guys a very simple single line text. You know, The more you perspire, the greater you inspire. And most of you were able to play around with the sizing, splitting up that, that single line and playing around with the size of each row of text and then creating a few effects so that it becomes the design on the right-hand side that you see there. Yeah, so um, that was one of the techniques that you all learned. And happy to see that, you know, by the end of that exercise, quite a number of you were sharing your screenshots on the chat window to show how you were able to do it, yeah? Um, another one, right? Another one would be where I also shared in terms of, you know, how you can convert your text into pictures. Yeah, remember when you control C on your text box and when you paste it, you know, you, you can, you have the option of pasting it as an image. And the moment you paste it as an image, of course, you were able to play around with the 3D rotation effects. Yeah. The 3D rotation effects were not designed for text. But because you pasted your text as a picture, then you were, that it enables you to use it. For those who were not around, let me just give a quick example of uh, what we did the last time around. So um, I'm sure everybody knows, like, you know, you can create four different text boxes like this, where you have I did as a text box, typography is a, a whole new text box on its own, today is a text box on its own, and I love it is a text box on its own. But um, we, I have already pasted this as individual pictures. So they're all in image form, right? And because it has become a picture, each of these lines have become a picture, that enables me to actually play around with the effects here. So what we did the last time around was we went to the 3D rotation um, box and we gave it parallel angles, yeah? giving different angles to all these different rows of text so that we were able to um, put them together and it actually became a whole new object. For example, uh, I'm going to show you very, very quickly how I, played, how I played around with the parallel angles. And just like that, the moment I put things together, they can be, it can become, uh, how should I say? It? Well, for lack of better words, it looks like a, it looks almost like a chocolate bar or a block of wood and things like that. And, you know, you can always select this entire thing again. You can always cut it and then paste it as a brand new picture so that you have something that's, you know, uh, very design driven as opposed to just having a normal sentence written, right? So that's one of the things that we shared last time around. Another thing that we went through, right, was, as I said, the use of colors. So. Again, when you come up with very um, basic designs or layouts of infographics like this, and it doesn't look that great, you know, because the colors that you see here are basically PowerPoint colors. And people uh, in general, right, whether it's your social media audience or, or, or people in, an, in a meeting room, right? The moment they see slides like this with this kind of shapes and colors, the colors itself, people identify it as a PowerPoint color. You know, especially with that gray and that baby blue and the mustard yellow, it's so predictable. Uh, so what I shared with you guys the last time around was that we can actually go to Google, right? And search for what we call as pastel tones. So the moment we search pastel tones on Google, um, Google will give us a result where it's just colors upon colors that we can just, uh, just copy as a picture, paste it onto our slides, yeah, paste it onto our slides and use it as a palette 
and what we do is play around with the eyedropper function, right? To eyedrop the colors that we found on Google into our objects so that they don't look very, uh, how do I say, it? very PowerPoint-ish, right? So it looks more Photoshop or Illustrator-like, yeah? Because these colors that you see here, the color, the color schemes that we get on Google are not readily available on the PowerPoint palette, yeah? So that's another thing that was shared. Um, another thing that was shared also was the, the placeholder designs, if you guys remember. So creating placeholders um, for infographics or even for your visuals, yeah? Um, it doesn't have to be complicated. Like for instance, if you look at the screen now, there are two circles and just two rectangles with the curved corners, yeah? And all it requires is that four shapes that you get out of PowerPoint to produce something like that on the right. Yeah. For example, if you if you like to see how it comes together, I'm just going to move this object so that um, you know you can see how they form. Like for example, right? Uh, these are the two circles, one being smaller than the other. Same with the curved rectangle, one is bigger than the other as well. So the, and and I have a picture which reflects uh, the the text that I put in. And then the moment you, you, you put it together, all you have to do is just organize it in terms of um, the layering. One is in front of the other, one is behind it, the other one is the backmost layer and things like that. And the moment you arrange it, there you go. It becomes a placeholder. So just from you know, the, the few different objects, the moment you put it together, you know, arrange it in terms of um, you know, layering. And when you put it together, you can actually create a placeholder. And you can just copy this in, uh, entire design as a picture, line them up, and you can start creating like, um, you know, thought processes or journeys or things that are uh, woven or interwoven or connected to each other, you know. So it just gives birth to a whole new set of opportunities in terms of design, yeah. Um, and then one of the subjects that I also shared was about image editing. Yeah, if you guys remember. So the moment you have two separate pictures, yeah, the picture like um, the one on the left of the figure skater, you can actually remove the background so that you can put um, the picture of your subject matter, in this case, the figure skater, into a backdrop design, you know, into a background design. And you can start putting in your text uh, and your logos and all that to create a whole new visual. Yeah. So for those who were not around to see this in May, um, the technique of removing a background like this, yeah, was uh, basically, let me just do a very quick demonstration on how it was done. So I'm going to, you know, uh, crop this picture first before I do the demo, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to cut it, paste it. Okay. So for me to actually, how we remove the background for that picture is basically double clicking on the image. We double click on the image and then on the top left hand corner here, there is a remove background function. So the moment we click on that, yeah, the, the area in purple is what PowerPoint um, assumes we want to remove. But as you can see here, you know, um, PowerPoint has conveniently left out the shoe. So of course, we will have to go back up here and select mark areas to keep, right? To actually just draw across to retain what was missing right and of course you can see that small white hole in between the hand and the shoe there you, that's not part of the shoe that's actually part of the eyes in the background so we switch across to mark areas to remove click on that very gently and you know everything else is removed so the moment we've removed whatever that we need to take out then we just select keep changes and the background goes away making it extremely easy for us to put things on top of any background designs that we want, yeah? So those are uh, basically how uh, the re background removal was done. And then we went into uh, a quick sharing on how do we make videos, yeah? So making videos was basically the, the idea of recording, um, you know, the timing that we stay on each slide, right? So the moment we put a music on the first slide itself, and then we'll record the movement so that um, the way we transit from one slide to another 
the, the, the amount of time that we stay on slide number two before we go to slide number three, uh, and then we go to slide number four. So PowerPoint captures the duration that we stay on each slide. And the moment if we move it according to the beat or, or the tempo of a music, we are able to actually save that entire movement in a video format, right? Like what you see here on screen was basically me um, putting in a series of words, right? A series of words together, one word on each slide. But the moment I have a good soundtrack behind it, something more dramatic and things like that, um, the moment I recorded the movements of these slides and saved it as a video format, this was the outcome. Let's watch this. So that was done completely using PowerPoint through the recording of the timing between um, each slide. Yeah. So I'm sure some of you um, from the last session have been practicing, have been trying that out. Yeah. And perhaps some of you have already started posting videos on your respective social media pages using PowerPoint. So if you have, fantastic. If you haven't, then perhaps um, with the with the subjects that we're going to learn today, it's going to even you know, make your upcoming videos even more enticing and visually stimulating. So that was a lot um, that was shared the last time around. So what's next, you know? Um, so we're going to go through the first subject for today. The first one, of course, as, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, design templates, yeah? First things first, before we even lay down any type of design on our, on our visuals, first thing is about the size, yeah? So, of course, PowerPoint being PowerPoint, the standard format is in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, right? It's 16, uh, uh, 16 across, 9 vertical. So, of course, um, this kind of size may not be optimum for um, social media, right? For example, if it's on an Instagram, it will be uh, ideally a 3 by 4 or a 1 to 1, a perfect square. Right. So now, if you're going to create social media visuals, or for example, Instagram, right, and you want a perfect square, there are two ways to go about it. Yeah. Um, for us to do that. One is, of course, is that um, you create a shape. Yeah. Just take a shape from PowerPoint that, which is basically a perfect square. And you can actually use this as your base. Right. So this is the first way to go about it so that whatever your elements that you're you're putting in whether it's your text whether it's your visuals put it within this space and later on you can select all the elements and start saving it as a picture so that's one way but uh, another way of doing it is to actually change the entire size of your slide into a slot into a size that you want for example um i'm going to go to design yeah, if you have your PowerPoints on, great. You can follow uh, this narration right here. If you go to design, on the far right, there is a slide size option. So drop it down and you can actually go to a custom slide size option. Yeah, there's a custom slide size right there. And it will open up a window right here and there's a blue uh, panel right there. Just drop it down. And PowerPoint has already given you some of the more popular paper sizes. Yeah, for instance, you can see your A3 here, your A4 here. You can always set it to a portrait, you know, so that it will be vertical in nature. Now, but what you can also do, you know, if you don't want to use any of these preset uh, sizes, is that you can also customize it. So what I would normally do when I'm creating social media visual is um, I will put the width and the height to be a perfect square. For example, I will put the width at 35, and I will put the height at 35 as well. So and then I set everything to portrait and I click OK, put ensure fit. And now what you see is the entire size of my canvas, if I were to zoom out a bit, the entire size of my slide has become a perfect square. It's no longer that 16 by 9 standard PowerPoint size. 
everything that we do here is already um, you know a, a canvas that is ready for your social media visual whether it's facebook whether it's instagram yep so the size of your slide is already a direct um, application to your uh, pictures right so that's one way of doing it and you may notice that you know, the moment i set it at 35 cm square right when i insert any text box right any text boxes it looks really really small right that is because the size of the the sheer size of the canvas the sheer size of the slide is actually quite big and this allows you to have a very high resolution output the moment you save it as a um, you save it as a picture you save it as an image yeah so even a point size 18 for calibri point size 18 under no normal circumstances would be sufficient for a presentation but if you look at point size 18 here it's really really small so this should, this indicates that the size of the slide itself is actually very big so whatever that you images that you put in all that when you save it as a picture it will be quite in a high resolution format yeah so that's uh, how you decide in terms of your canvas size yeah in terms of your slide size so now moving on next um well of course one of the key things in creating a template is the style of background that you want to put on your image so before you start putting in any content whatsoever the first thing that you have to consider is the kind of background yeah and i'm going to show you how um certain styles of uh, content requires a different kind of background approach yeah so just uh, bear with me as i go through this the first background style is of course a very what we call uh, a plain a plain colored background yeah so nothing fancy about it it's just a standard color you might have a little bit of a gradient uh, tone to it from a dark uh, a dark red to a lighter red or things like that but essentially it's just a plain colored background. So that's one option. The other approach would be to create something that is more graphical. Yeah, That means you have arrows or you have shapes or that comes in multiple colors or, or layouts or, or arrangements and angles and things like that. So this is another kind of background. Um, another one would be to have a very image driven background. You know, So you have probably a stylized image of something or someone or some place but it is basically a photograph right so these are the three most common background styles whether it's a plain colored one whether it is graphical or it is image driven yeah now um not all kinds of content not every content can fit into uh, all three backgrounds and I'll, I'll and i'll show you what i mean yeah so I want you guys to, to um, interact with me in the chat window. Now, I have this sort of content right here. If you look at this, I've got four pictures and I've got a text box, you know, with a title right there. Now, let you guys tell me, uh, based on your own uh, opinion, when you look at it, I want you guys to tell me whether would this, um, would this visual, would this set of four pictures and the text and all that look um, out of place when I put it on a certain background style. Would it look too messy? Would it look fine? Would it look clean or things like that? So let's try it out. I'm first going to put it on the graphical background, on the graphic background, right? If I put it here, um, do you think it looks clean or does it look busy? Put it. Uh, just type your comments in the chat window. Does it look clean or does it look busy? Let's see. Busy, right? exactly exactly it looks extremely busy because the background and the foreground and your subjects and all that are all equally fighting for attention right they're all fighting for attention so this kind of uh, content will not look good on a graphical style if it's that kind of busy with that kind of multiple colors and all that now if i was to put it on a you know on a photo driven background yeah it's not about looking busy or not busy now, but it's now about blocking the, the core photo that you have in the background, yeah? So, you know, if you dominate your background like this, then if you dominate the, the foreground with your picture like this, 
then that image at the back will not be prominent at all or it might not even make sense anymore so yeah text no good yes correct so one pic one big picture uh, behind four smaller pictures might not be ideal so therefore i think the best uh, kind of background for this kind of visuals or this kind of um, what do you call that content will look good in a very plain simple layout like this yeah so that is very clear what's the background, what's the foreground, what people should be paying attention to. Yeah. So um, not every content, not every content style fits into uh, the backgrounds that you set. So always try to, you know, uh, do a little bit of checking and see whether, okay, what would fit. Now, then again, it doesn't mean that the moment you have a background, uh, uh, a subject like this, you cannot use a graphical background because all you need to do, guys, is perhaps if it's a very busy background, you can always do this. You can always double click on it. Yeah, double click. And the moment it goes into a picture format tab, there's a way for you to use the artistic effects right here and may give it a blur effect, right? So there's a blur tool right here, which makes it a little bit blur. And then you can actually go to format picture right? And you can make it a little bit darker, for example, right? So the moment you make it a little bit darker like that, right? Now, if I was to put that same content on top, it starts to become a little bit more bearable, yeah? As opposed to previously, because the colors were all fighting for attention, the sharpness of the background was extremely strong and all that. So, you know, it wasn't great. But the moment if you were to play around with the brightness and, and you know, bring tone it down a bit, uh, make the background a little bit more blurred, you know, so that gives, um, you know, the visual, the, the adjustments that we need where, you know, the, our audience will know, okay, this is the content, that's just the background. So it's not fighting anymore. Same thing here, you know, if you don't want to um, uh, block your primary image at the back, then it's all just about positioning, right? So imagine if you have these four as your secondary images and then you have a nice big um, headline up here, it can still uh, happen, yeah? So there's no fixed rule of thumb that says, you know, no, a, a, a set of four pictures cannot look well on a graphical background. That's just a few adjustments away, okay? So do play around with that. Now, the other thing, I would highly recommend is um, the use of pictures. Remember when I just uh, briefly shared earlier about the way we remove backgrounds? Yeah. So that is going to look, that is going to make our content look a lot better. For example, yeah, having pictures that don't come with backgrounds will make our life a whole lot easier and it can be, it's more dynamic as opposed to putting in pictures that are already in their frames. For example, a picture of, of Usain, Bolt, Usain Bolt here, if I was to put him on a background like this, it would still work, yeah? Because one is a human element, the other one is a graphical element, so people will not get confused as to what is what. And if I was to put Usain Bolt on a plain background, right, it would also work, again, because, you know, it's just his outline, so that has a very clean look. Where he may not possibly fit, would probably be, you know, if there are two human elements in there, then it might not work. But then again, just like what I did earlier, this is just a matter of imagine if I go to artistic effects and blur it out a bit and, you know, just giving an, a rough, uh, what do you call it? Visual idea of what that background is. And then the moment I put him back on top, then it may work. Yeah. But the beauty of using pictures that don't come with backgrounds is that it is, in this case, it's so much easier for you to start putting in uh, elements of, uh, you know, text designs and things like that so that, you know, it's going to look good, right? For example, when I put it on a plain background like this, it's very clear, yeah? What may not be great is when I start putting text like this, right? And, and onto a multicolored background and all that, it may not look good. So again, this is just uh, a few fixes away. For example, if I've got a headline like this, 
and my background is multicolored, my template is multicolored. Well, then let's just um, get about it. How do we go around it? I'm going to put in a very simple shape like this, right? For example, this is a shape that you can, or not this one. Let me get a proper one, uh, for example. Yeah, this one. I can always create a very simple placeholder design like that, right? And change the color to maybe um, a dark gray and then putting in that text on top, it will still work. So it doesn't mean that just because you have text and the background is multicolored, it may not work. It's just about creating a placeholder to make sure that your text does not drown with the visuals behind it. How do you get a picture of an object without the background? Um, ah, good question, uh, Loretta. Yeah, so now the way you get it is, when you go to Google, all right, I'm going to quickly go to Google for you guys. One way to search for it is I'm going to search for, most of you will search for Usain Bolt picture. Yeah, picture. Now, um, and which will have all these backgrounds of the crowd and the racetrack and things like that. Yeah. So what I would recommend to you when you're searching for pictures that don't come with background, add the word PNG. Okay. Just put Usain Bolt PNG or Usain Bolt transparent PNG because um, PNG files generally do not come with background. So how do you know? Is that when you double click on a picture like this, yeah, it, right now, before you click on it, it looks as though it has a white background, right? But the moment you click to enlarge and preview, that background changes to a checkered shape, a checkered gray and white shape. This indicates that the background, that this image does not come with a background. So you can actually just copy the image, go back to your PowerPoint, right? Go back to where your PowerPoint is, just control V, just paste it. As you can see there, there is no background involved. So you can just straight away put him in, right? So remember the search term, uh, if you're searching for pictures that don't come with background, just add the word PNG in the search, yeah? And you will find variations of images that do not have backgrounds, all right? So that's, uh, one suggestion that I can share with you. Just right. uh, okay. Joe, hi, Gustavo, yeah. sorry to interrupt. Hi. Just on, on, on Loretta's question, I think that also uh, your tip to remove the background. Mm -hmm. uh, once uh, the NOC, if they got uh, uh, a photo that you have the rights to use, uh, because sometimes Google, if you get a photo from Getty and you're not, yep. did not pay for it, probably you may get fined. So, yes. uh, the safest thing for you to do as you're going to post as an organization is mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, you can get the picture that you can use and then you can yes. remove the background as Joe uh, showed in the beginning and also in the last session. Uh, Loretta, if you were not able to follow, I suggest you can check on uh, the recording of Joe's mm -hmm. first session mm -hmm. in our uh, you, uh, YouTube channel and there you can see how it's done once more. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Gustavo, for adding on to that. And another way that you can also check uh, on Google is that if you want to know the difference between um, pictures that are rights managed, pictures that are royalty free and things like that, in Google itself, you can go to tools. Yeah, when, when you're searching, you can go to tools. There's a usage rights function here. So you can filter it to, you know, whether it's creative commons or commercial usage, and you can find the results for both. Yeah, so that's another way for looking at it. But of course, I highly, highly recommend go into um, you know the image banks that you you guys have access to. I'm sure Enoch has a very large uh, image bank that you can acquire uh, pictures that you know you guys can use. So, well, get in touch with Gustavo and Andres for that. All right, great. Um, so that's one. Now, I'm going to go into the formats and the sizes again because now in terms of pl the placement of your objects, yeah. Whether it's a perfect square, whether it's a vertical uh, size of an image, or whether it's you know a horizontal uh, billboard or you know or a banner that you're doing and all that, you know naturally most of the time people are under the idea that you know center is putting them in the center is the one that's most uh, what do you call that the most effective or the most impactful. Yep. Then again. That's not, uh, that's not uh, what do you call that, uh, rule of thumb 
or that's not cast in stone that that is the mo most optimum placement. Yeah, because I'll give you an idea uh, of the type of arrangements that you can do. Uh, there are three kinds. Yeah, one is the conventional style of arrangement. Number two is about focus, and number three is about being symmetrical. So, the conventional way of placement of placing your content is that um, we follow the human eye's natural reading order. Well, especially if you're yeah, if you're reading alphanumeric, right? So if you're reading alphanumeric, our eyes uh, are already trained to absorb information from the top left and making our way down to the middle and finish finishing up on the right-hand side, which is why you see most advertisements, most ads, most commercials or, or print, print, print ads out there, they all follow this structure because that's the natural human reading order they want to capture you with a with a you know well-written headline they want to dazzle you with the, the, the image of the product you know with a description of what it is and they will put their logos of their brands last because that's the image that they want to you to remember the most at the end of the uh, visual consumption yeah so this is the conventional approach or you can even create focus focus by by having a pair weightage of the visual and the text itself and both of them share an equal amount of uh, weightage to the visual like for instance a very good 50 50 left and right yeah with some area of uh, description at the bottom as a secondary content yeah but you can see that the text and the and the visual you're seeing it together yeah that the, you're seeing the gymnast and the text together they go hand in hand whereas the first one you're reading the, the you're reading the copy first, and then you're following up with the visual and seeing the brand or the logo last. The third one is my personal favorite, yeah, which is the symmetrical approach. So, um, some of us may prefer to go conventional. Some of us may play around with the weightage, like um, the one that I, I share with you on the focus option here. But for me, uh, my trademark style has always been about symmetrical, yeah where everything from the um, from the headline itself to the visual to the description to the logo everything is in a single file yeah so every time i if if, if the opportunity permits me to have this kind of layout you know um, i would do it this way because i love to have a lot of breathing space on on the visual itself so you can see here the left and right are basically untouched where and as well as what's in the middle is the natural reading order where people will see the text, they will see the supporting visual, uh, read the description, followed up with the logo at the end, right? So to me, that is my most preferred style of a layout. But again, depending on the subject matter that you're doing, whether it's statistic driven, whether it's motivational quotes, whether it's uh, a product or a service or a history or whatever your content may be, explore between these three layouts yeah another thing is about application ideas the colors because let's face it um the olympic colors are, are extremely bright yeah so to actually use all the five colors excessively may be a little bit overwhelming in terms of uh, visual yeah so i do not recommend that we create you know multiple multiple boxes or, or shapes and all that uh, for example, right, to featuring all the five colors and whatnot as our design base, right? For example, some of us will probably start doing things like this, where um, I'm going to eye drop the blue, and then I'm going to eye drop the yellow, and then I am going to copy another square here by, um, okay, I'm going to create another box. One, two, three. Okay, let's choose another color here, maybe black, right? Okay, I'm gonna choose a black. Okay, and then, okay, since we can't see the black, I'm just gonna put it at a very dark gray, for example, All right? Uh, now, two more colors. You can see how the background will start looking extremely busy right now. Uh, for example, I'm gonna go eyedropper, take the green, and then last but not least, I'm gonna put the red, yeah? So playing around with, um, the colors of uh, the Olympic logo is not that bad. Yeah. Okay. 
imagine if you put a white base text or a picture with a background, you know, a picture without a background actually, you know, with a white text and all that, it may just look good. It may look very vibrant, yeah. But um, the moment you, uh, it could be a little bit busy. So if you like a very clean, uh, what do you call it, minimalist kind of look, you you may not go with this kind of color schemes or the the the, the significance of the colors and all that in in such a you know prominent manner. What I would, what I like to do is I will use all these colors, but in a very subtle approach. For example, um, if it's going to be a social media post, right? I can perhaps create something like this where. Uh, I'm going to use a style of framing. Yeah, I will probably choose like, um, you see this shape here? It looks really, really good as a border, right? As a border or probably like, um, you know, like a viewfinder of a camera when you're taking a picture and you're going to zoom in and things like that. It looks really, really good uh, at, the, at the edges, right? So for example, I'm just going to give you an idea of what I, I can do with this. Is that I'm going to put this like that. And then I'm going to put it the other way around as well. Oops. I'm going to change it this way. Right. Okay. So I've got it across all the four corners. Then I start eye dropping the colors. Okay. I drop, use this one for the blue. Uh, use the yellow for this one. Yellow. Uh, this one, I will probably try the red. And the last one, probably um, the green. Right, so these are the real subtle approaches of using the the, 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 the Olympic colors, right? R rather than having them in your face and extremely visible and, and, and bright and things like that, if you like to have a clean uh, look, play with them in a subtle manner such as this. Another example would be one of my personal favorites. If you look at up here, the, te the, the template that I created up here, is just basically creating four different um, rectangles, for example. Yeah, four different rectangles like that. Two, okay, three, four. Align them side by side, right? And then start applying those colors in, yeah? Right, and then I'm gonna put another one here, that's the blue, and another one is the yellow. So the moment I put them together, Remember, we can select all the four objects. We can cut it. We can paste it, paste options, paste it as a picture so that we can just shrink it down or make it slim, adjust it this way so that it can just put as a very minimal style bar you know, that you can put on the bottom left or replicate it again to put it on the top right. So these are the things that you can actually explore if you don't want the colors to be too um, prominent or too harsh yeah, to the eyes of your audience. You can always slim it down like that and put it as a, you know, a, as a border design, just as a small indication. So these are the things that you can play around. So this is why I love PowerPoint because I have that much freedom to play around with the placements and, the, and, and whatnot, you know, using the colors that I can eye drop from um, the, the, the Olympic logo and it's just the opportunity is just limitless. Yeah. So that's that. Now we're going to go through one more subject before we have a break. Yeah. And, and then we have our exercise, which is the animation tips. So I understand that I'm sure at least 90% of you guys today, when you do presentation, you're already capable of doing some very basic animations for the content to come out based on your clicking, for example. Yeah. So you click once, an object comes out. You click one, the object comes out. So that's the basic uh, use of PowerPoint animation. But there are also really, really cool animation styles, which will be really good. Uh, it's going to look really awesome the moment you convert your PowerPoint into a video format, like I showed earlier. Um, one example is this, you know. So I was playing around with this yesterday where, you know, I wanted to show how Jamaica has dominated um, the 100 meter race, right? So the last five world records were all set by um, Jamaica, right? So of course I can arrange this in a normal structured timeline manner that can be done as a static visual, but why not do it as a video where if you look at what I'm gonna do here, 
just pay attention to that gear, right? That that wheel in the middle, where um, everything that you're going to see is is using PowerPoint animation. I'm going to click once, and Usain Bolt appears with the 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 current record that's standing, right? And then I'm going to click once, and that wheel, the gear in the middle, is going to turn a little bit to reveal his previous record. Click again to reveal the one in, in 2008. And then Asafa Powell's and the one before that. So based on my clicking, that wheel is moving one by one, you know, revealing one record after another or things like that, which makes it very interactive. And imagine putting a, a very light music behind it and, and timing it and recording it is going to really look good as a video on your social postings. Yeah. So I'm going to show you how it's done, right? Um, so how I did it was basically, you know, first I went to Google and searched for a gear. Just search gear, icon, transparent, PNG, and you'll find something like this. But, um, you know, most gears, the gear icons that you get on Google will not come with a light or a yellow bar like that. So it's just a matter of me using, you know, the function on PowerPoint, adding in a shape on PowerPoint to create that yellow. So I just cut, paste it as a picture, right? And then really, really shrinking or playing around with it and shrinking it, right? To actually put it inside, you know, you get the idea of how I can actually put it in there and create the indicator, right? So uh, a very good reminder that uh, I want to share with you guys is every time you're going to animate anything on PowerPoint, always open up your animation panel, all right? So your animation panel is here. So the mo this panel on the right, right hand side will open so that you can keep track of the what objects you're animating. So in this case, the first thing that I want to animate would be his first record, right? So I'm just going to select pay. Yeah. Now, because um, the wheel has not turned yet, because the first the first content that's going to move is of course the symbols current record. Now I want the wheel to move. So to make the wheel move. So don't worry if you guys can't, can't keep, uh, keep up with this technique, yeah? because as uh, Gustavo said, you're going to have this access to download this video, to watch this video again and again, so that you can see exactly the step-by-step -step, um, uh, steps that I take to make this happen. Yeah? So first things first, for the wheel, for the gear, I'm going to select, go into this yellow area here, which says emphasis. So I'm going to choose a spin function. Right. So when I select spin, that wheel is going to spin a full circle, a full 360 degree motion, and then it comes to a stop. Right. So let's go full screen. Right. So I'm going to click once his current record. And then the moment I click one more time, it's going to spin a full spin and then it stops. Yeah. So I'm going to show you how to actually stop at the second record instead of making a full circle. Right. So you can see here in the animation pane, under the animation pane, I already have the, the spin function, which is this yellow bar here. So there's a small black arrow at the, at the side here, which allows you to drop it down and go to the options. We're basically going to play around with the, with the uh, movement. So the moment we click options, the amount here by default is 360 degrees, a full circle, but I'm going to drop it down and I'm going to try to change it to maybe um, 60 degrees, for example. No, maybe 30 degrees, yeah? Change it custom, put it 30, and click OK. And wait, hang on. I don't think it went in. Let me change it again. I'm going to put 30, press Enter, so that when the box closes, it's reflecting the, the amount that you had just put in. Click OK, and it will move, right? So as you can see there, um, I don't think it moved enough. So let's see again. Okay, we're a bit short. So go back there, go to effect options, change it. It's currently not 30. Maybe let's change it to, let's double that to 60, right? And let's see whether that works. There you go. Perfect, right? So let's try it again. My first click, Usain Bolt's current record. The next click is to wheel is for the wheel to spin at 60 degrees. 
Nice. All right. Perfect. But it's a bit slow. So you can always go to the duration here. You can see that currently is at two seconds. You might want to play around with it to maybe change it to 0 0.5, like half a second, so that it's not too draggy, right? So you can see here, number one, click again. There you go. And it's pointing to the previous record. So now let's go down. Let's do another set. The problem is, this is where a lot of people tend to forget about this, yeah? This next technique. Because the wheel already has an animation, which is a spin function. We've set that already. So to make it move again, we can't just select spin because it's already done. So if you want the same object, in this case, this wheel, to spin one more time for another click, you have to select add animation. You have to add another, another line item in this animation pane. So we have to go to add animation and we have to add a brand new spin. There you go. So that in the chat, in the, in the animation pane itself, you see a new line item, yeah? So this is where you have to redo a little bit on the um, uh, options just now. Go back to effect options, change it back to um, 60 degrees, for example, right? And click OK, All right? Let's see whether it works at 60. Okay, let's uh, go into full screen and check it out. So this is 60. That's the next 60. Is it enough? Nope, that's not enough. So let's play around with it again. Go to effect options. Instead of 60, maybe put 80 degrees. It's all about trial and error, guys. So until, you, until the needle points the right direction. Yeah. Oh, forgot the timing. Let's change it to half a second up here so that it doesn't move so slow. Okay, let's click once. All right. Click twice. There you go. Perfect. And then... The second one, the, sec uh, the third record here, previous record, should be after the movement of that, um, you know, of that gear. So as you can see, that's how we start creating all this animated movement so that, you know, it can come up really, really nice the moment we save it as a video with music behind it and all that. Yeah. So do try that at your own time. And another thing that you can actually try out, if you go into your animations, right? Um, you know, the green area and the yellow area and the red areas here. So the green areas is for your objects to come into the slide, right? The yellow ones, your content is not coming in or coming out. It's, it's there, but it's just creating a little bit of excitement, whether it's just uh, teetering a little bit or it's pulsing, it's pulsating, it's growing and shrinking, you know, just to give it a little bit of uh, attention, right? The red ones are where your content it's already on the slide, but as you click on it, it disappears. It goes away. The last one is interesting. The last one is known as a motion path. The motion path um, animation is for your objects. You know, For instance, if you want Usain Bolt to move from the left to right, you can actually select a motion path. And I'll give you a demonstration of you know, one of the crazy style of animations that I've done. So if you look here um, at this slide, Right, I've got a couple of cars. I've got a truck. I've got uh, I've got a what do you call that? Uh, an Audi, a white color Audi, and I've got a couple of clouds here. A small cloud, a big cloud, and and I've got an animated GIF of someone running. You know, you can go to Google and find animated GIFs because these GIFs are already moving when you paste it into PowerPoint. Right now, look at all these arrows here. These are all the motion path that I have set for each object. Yeah, the, the green dots uh, indicate where the objects are starting from and the red dots indicate where the objects are going to finish. And as you can see, they're going to start outside of the, outside of the slide. They're going to come into the slide, travel across the slide and finish outside of the slide. Right? See what happens when I put it into a full screen uh, presentation mode is that you know i'm able to create all these movements to give a you know a an illusion where it looks as though the running man in the middle there is just overtaking everybody uh, is just overtaking every car out there but in actual fact um the guy is not moving it's just that his entire environment is the one that's moving from the left to the right going back to the uh, right and then moving to the left and things like that sorry yeah so that's basically 
the way the, the degree of animation that we can do on PowerPoint. So I would really, really recommend that at your own free time and even after this, after this class, the moment you uh, view the video again, do play around with these uh, functions because there's so much in PowerPoint that has that you have yet to discover. Yeah. And it's just limited by your own imagination in terms of what you want to do. All right. Great. Now, my last um, my last sharing before we go into our break and our exercise could be a dashboard design. So a dashboard design is basically, for example, if you've got numbers, statistics, percentages that you want to share, I'm sure some of you may find it hard to believe that all these movements that, and designs that you see here was done completely out of PowerPoint. And all those moving bars and that green circle and all that, those are just animated GIFs that I got from Google, right? But designing that circles and all that, you may not believe it, but that circle design was done. Uh, that uh, circle design that you can that you see here, the green, the the green ones, the red ones, and all that, this were all done out of PowerPoint. And believe me, the source file, yeah, the original uh, file came from a pie chart. So I'm sure you know PowerPoint has some pie chart templates, right? This were all done using pie chart. If you do not believe me, let me show you very, very quickly how it's done. Yeah. So I'm going to insert a chart, a pie, and a donut version like this. Right. So everybody knows at this point that you can actually put um, a pie chart right here. So I'm going to do 5% slices yeah, times 20 to make up 100%. So 5, 5%, uh, 5 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 20 slices of 5% to make up 100%. Uh-oh, where did it go? Hello, come back here. Okay, there you go. All right, so I'm going to delete the legend down there. I'm going to delete the title up here so that there's only the base design of the pie, right? Here's what I'm going to do next. The moment I click into the buy, right, um, I'm going to change the color to a dark color, for example. I'm going to choose a dark gray, like that. And the outlines, I don't want these white out outlines. So I'm going to choose a very dark, I can, I can keep the outline, but I want, I'll choose a very dark color for it. For example, like black. Yeah? And then I'm going to increase the weight of the outlines so that it's a bit thicker. Now, you can barely see the pie chart now. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to po select format data series. And because it's a donut pie chart, um, the moment the panel on the right here opens, one of the options here is the donut whole size, which I'm going to reduce from 70 plus percent to maybe, um, for example, 50, 54% or 55%. That's up to you. Yeah. So now you have the base. I'm going to insert a text box. Maybe just put in a percentage, for example, 35%, right? And I'm going to make it really, really huge. I'm going to change the color to a pink, size maybe 96. Let's change to a really, really cool font, for example, like Oswald Medium. Okay, I'm going to put it right in the middle like that. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to eye drop that, that um, that red here, the red color for, that I use for the 35, and use it and color each and every slice. So that's 5, 10, 15, and then 20, and then 25, and then 30, and then 35, right? If you want to create, uh, create a little bit of effect to make it more uh, three-dimensional or more realistic, you can always, like for instance, go on the right-hand uh, right panel here, give it a little bit of an inner shadow. Yeah, not outer shadow. Most of us always play with outer shadow. But I'm going to show you how to play with inner shadow. The moment you create an inner shadow, there will be a hint of shadows hint of shadows inside the slices. But if, as you can see here, it's not visible enough. So you can always increase the distance of those shadows to perhaps to 15 points, make it a little bit blur, right? We can play around with the blur effect. We can even reduce the transparency so that the, 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 the blackness comes out a lot stronger. And 
just to create a little bit of texture yeah, or the, a real sunken look behind it. So now all you have to do is select that number and the base design, copy it, start pasting it as a picture, you know, so that when it's in image form, you can always reduce the size and put it alongside and start working on other data as well, other percentages, put a different color scheme. But what you can do, what you can now create is designs that you never thought were possible on PowerPoint, right? And nobody in their right frame of mind would have thought that, uh, would, would have tried to use a pie chart this way, yeah? So again, this is just some of the ideas that um, I can share with you for now. All right, so guys, it's time to have a break. Um, let it all sink in, <laughs> whatever that I've uh, shared with you for the last one hour. Time flies really fast when you're, when you're having fun. As you can see, we've gone a full hour into the session already. Yeah, let's have a 10 minute break. Um, come back at exactly um, now is at my, uh, my local time is 8.10. Let's uh, come back here at 8.20 so that I will brief you on the two options of exercises that you're going to do in, uh, right after this. So yeah, uh, see you in 10 minutes time. Hi, uh, Ritesh. Thank you for the question. Um, let me just see that again. Okay. How and where do we get access to rights free music? Um, well, rights free music is very hard to come by. Yeah. One of my preferred methods is um, going to YouTube because YouTube has quite a number of these uh, bedroom composers who, you know, they just want to share their works, they just want to share their crafts, and there are no Right? And they even put it in their descriptions that, you know, feel free to use my music and spread the love across, you know, and things like that. So some of these guys make really, really good music. So um, the proper search term, right, on when you go to YouTube, search for uh, presentation background music uh, royalty free, you know, or, or along those lines uh, in terms of context. And you'll be surprised to find some really, really um, you know, talented uh, bedroom uh, composers sharing their 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 work, right? Um, just take note of the description, you know, in, and they will probably give a link to download their music. And but just um, make sure that you know there's a statement that says you know free to use, uh, no copyrights whatsoever. Yeah. But I for more professional work, I would go um, to two places where you have to purchase the music but they are extremely, extremely affordable. Uh, I'm going to type it here in the chat window. One would be Epidemic, uh, epidemic Sounds. Yeah, search for that. Um, that's one website where that has really, really nice uh, music. Very short 20-second, 30-second tunes. They even have sound effects as well. Uh, the other one is um, Audio Jungle. Yeah, Audio Jungle. So these are the two uh, websites that I go to to purchase uh, music and they cost less than 50 USD. Yeah? The big difference between Epidemic Sounds and Audio Jungle is that Audio Jungle charges by uh, audio track. Yeah, some audio tracks will cost 49 USD, some audio tracks will cost 9 USD, whereas Epidemic Sounds, um, they charge on a package, on a monthly package. 
So for example, um, if you select package A, for every month you are allowed to extract about 10 music files. And then if you take package B, every month you're allowed to extract 20 to 30 music files. So Epidemic uh, is more uh, for those who regularly push out content and, and, and things like that. Whereas Audio Jungle is just when you want, if you want to need to do a one-off, then it would be more cost efficient. So depending on the, the, the degree of work or, or the frequency of uh, music that you need to do, then um, this is the two that I highly recommend. Uh, that answers your question, Ritesh? <laughs> Bedroom composer, yes. All right. Awesome. Yes, thank you. The, the cheaper YouTube option. Yes, that would be that would be me too. <laughs> That's my preferred. Another question, um, Joe. Yes, go ahead. Um, how does I mean this is amazing what we're seeing on PowerPoint? How does oh what's your commentary on PowerPoint versus Canva? Um well actually I'll I'll add one more platform into the mix, which is Keynote uh for Mac. Yeah. So Canva, um, Keynote, and PowerPoint. In terms of um, user, in terms of design or the, the the tools itself, I would say um, Canva is up there. Yeah, C Canva and Keynote is actually better than PowerPoint. Yeah, uh, in terms of the crisp of the crispness of the, the the high resolution images that you put in and the animation styles and all that is a lot more. There's a lot more variety and it, it looks really, really great. The problem with using this is the compatibility of it with the business world. Yeah. So especially if it's if you're presenting it out of your laptop or you are during a conference and all that, it would be great to use all these tools. But the moment you have to email them across or share links and things like that, that's when it gets a little bit um, tricky. Yeah. Whereas PowerPoint is the most universally accepted um, form of you know a presentation file so and you know i try to make best which is why i i explored powerpoint to its fullest because that's what i was given that's what everyone wants that's what everyone wants in the business world so i challenged myself to make powerpoint as flexible or as dynamic or as creative as uh the likes of you know keynote and and, and canva as well so yeah in terms of um, design wise I would, I would, um, I would go for Canva and and uh, what do you call that Keynote, but um, PowerPoint is really, really up there. The moment you learn how to exploit it, yeah, All right, good, um, yeah. Thanks. So great. Any more questions? While we're still on the break, we've got about a minute more before we uh, continue with the briefing. Ah. Kulisi, uh, I'm picking up a lot of InDesign infused in PowerPoint and I like it. Yeah. Yeah. So now when I, when, even when I start doing um, A4 documents, right, which I later convert into PDF, I love doing it out of PowerPoint as opposed to Microsoft Word. I'm sure not everybody here today is a fan of Microsoft Word. Is Microsoft Word to me is, uh, you know, is science in its own right. You know, you just can't align everything perfectly. <laughs> it's so difficult. So PowerPoint gives you that flexibility and, and use it as a design tool. You just have to remember the, the um, slide sizes now, set it as, as A4, put it on a portrait, and you can start designing really, really cool documents just by using PowerPoint. I, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. So can't wait for you guys to explore it at your own time. And if you know, if you'd like to stay in touch with me, I'm sure um, uh, do, do, um, get my contact details from uh, Gustavo as well as uh, from uh, the organizers today and uh, do reach out to me if you have you know any questions in the future yeah oh some pdfs uh well wow. wow good i mean i can share a couple i mean um i can actually share very very quickly now before we go into the subject is that uh, my latest uh proposals right my latest uh what about my class and all that so this is a PDF that um, I did out of uh, PowerPoint. So let me reduce the size yeah, into a uh, 75%. So this is basically the, um, my, my, my training brochure where the moment I meet clients and I tell them what, what my class is about and all. This is something that, is, that I print out yeah, 
and bind and send it to my clients so that they can they can read about what my class is, you know, and whatnot. And this entire thing was designed out of PowerPoint, right? So I chose a conventional white color background simply because uh, printing costs is going to be expensive in my slide if my if my pages are in black. So, but most of the time I would I love doing dark color backgrounds. But in the interest of printing this and sending it across, then of course, uh, yeah. I put it in white, right? So that's one. That's one option. The other one would be, you know, sending um, documents that the uh, PowerPoint documents in PDFs, right? For example, let me share one very very quickly. Where, um, for instance, if it's horizontal and using a, a PowerPoint uh, style, PowerPoint style uh, size, you can also do something like this, where, you know, and this is not friendly for printing, of course. Right, but um, yeah, it's just a very, very nice design color scheme and all that. Where you want to go very digital and very uh, uh, illuminated style of look, you can always create this kind of files as well. So it's all about exporting, like You design it out of PowerPoint and then you export to PDF, and it should come out come out really, really good. All right, great. Okay, I've got tons of um, references so for next time if you want something very uh, specific to the nature of uh, subject that you are you are doing then of course um just uh, reach out to me at um, you know uh, at your own time and then uh, I'll try to assist you in whatever way I can okay so it's time for the exercise briefing we're a slightly behind time now uh, we were supposed to start about 10 minutes ago so we might have a 10 minute extension but nevertheless let's I'm going to brief you guys yeah so um, there are two uh, exercises for you to choose from, whichever you think uh, would be easier for you, right? The first one is, the first task, if you choose to select this one, is basically uh, create a th thematic social media visual that features a motivational quote accompanied by the relevant picture. That means if, you know, Muhammad Ali has said something inspiring, Get a picture of Moma Ali. Uh, write that quote. Design the way uh, the way you you design the text, the placements, and things like that, and create a picture out of it. Yeah, from PowerPoint. You might want to insert a few um, colors of the uh, whether it's your country colors or whether it's the Olympic colors. You know, from remember the the, the techniques that I shared with you in terms of putting small uh, touches of those colors at the border or, or or what you see at the at the top here. Yeah. These are the things that you can uh, infuse into your design, right? That's one way to look at it. So yeah, this is the first option. Motivational quote uh, said by, you know, said by a renowned athlete or an athlete uh, in general and putting a picture of that athlete, right? That's one. Um, the second option is basically we have the International Day of Peace a global uh, event, a global day uh, that's going to happen on the 21st of September. So if you don't want to do the motivational quote, try this one, which is design a greeting visual for the International Day of Peace, right? So for example, wishing the world today, uh, wishing everyone today, uh, you know, a day of peace or, or however you want your message like to be in your own native language if you like to. Right, so option one, motivational quote. Option two, uh, International Day of Peace. Right. So now, remember searching for icons. Remember, it's all about uh, your keyword. Right. For example, if you're doing option two, you want to find a picture of a dove. Right. For example, the bird. Um, make sure you search for dove. Uh, transpar if you want a real bird, then of course you just put a dove transparent PNG and you get the real birds like this. A second option would be to search for a vector design. Yeah, there's a word called vector. So the vector PNG would be stylized drawings like this. Yeah, okay. Or if you want icons, then search for the icon PNG. Yeah, so pictures of the real the or uh, the icon style or the vector style, that's all in your search right in terms of the the design preference yeah so 
try it out. Yeah, for motivational quotes, of course, I think if you search for, you know, um, search for sports motivational quote. Yeah, you see there's sports motivational quotes. You will see quite a number of references here. Please don't cheat and take the entire picture and, and dump it into PowerPoint and say it's done. Perhaps do it independently. Write the text yourself. Find a picture that doesn't have text. Then start building it using PowerPoint. That would be more fulfilling yeah, for you guys. Okay, so that's what you can do. I will, I'm afraid we can't give 40 minutes because um, we're running behind. So we have to have it by uh, 20 minutes. So yeah, so we let's try to complete this by now it's 8.27 Malaysian time. So we're gonna, I'm going to round it up as 8.30. So let's do this until 8.50. Yeah, so 20 minutes to uh, complete this. See to what extent you can do in 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, now, uh, you don't really have to submit it today. For those who can do this really, really quick, great. But you can actually um, submit it to Gustavo later because yeah. what we're going to do is um, we're going to pick out the 10 best designs. Yeah. Uh, and you guys tend to win something. This is coming from me where the, the top 10 submissions, I'm sure there's about how many of us here today? Yeah, we've got about 50 plus. So one fifth of you guys stand to get this from me, uh, where I have just recently released 50 infographic templates. And these templates uh, that is in this single PowerPoint file, all of these templates are fully editable. You can change the color schemes to your own colors. You can uh, change the content, rewrite everything, change your fonts, you know, and all that is fully editable so that you can you know, um, put your own respective content into it. I've just created the design that's easy for you to copy, right? So uh, the top 10 submissions will get this file for free, right? So yeah, great. So yeah. that's- Joe, if I may it. add very yes. quickly. Yes. So I just add our uh, events at anacolympic.org email on the chat. So mm -hmm. I ask you to, once you finish uh, your, your design, you can take a print screen and send to this email address. So Joe can give a, a feedback still during this session. If you want to yep. take more time, uh, you can send later afterwards. And then uh, we're going to see the top 10 together with Joe to see who can get yep. uh, this uh, 50 uh, templates for you to use uh, for your own presentations. I just yep. challenge each one of you, um, if possible, to use your NOC colors in your designs and maybe your NOC logo when you're doing the designs here for the for the exercise. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So let, exactly. let's go to work. And okay. so, uh, when you're done, please share the results so we can uh, share with everyone and Joe can give his uh, feedback. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So as Gustavo said, if you would, uh, you know, you would like to hear in terms of my input to your to your craft, you know, the moment you put it in the chat window, I'm gonna Click on it, I'm gonna look at it, and I'm gonna give you my, my humble two cents worth in terms of you know uh, what can be further enhanced or what else can you do, uh, what else can you explore doing and things like that. But um, you know, I would really, really recommend that you do so uh, while you still have me here, uh, you know, albeit you know, um, digitally, but I'm here to actually give you feedbacks and all that to do take. Um, advantage of my presence by, by sharing it with everyone. Joe, yeah, can you go back I, to the exercise very quickly so people can see it? Sure, can. So here we go. There you go. Oh, hang on. Let me go back here. Okay, there you go, guys. So Thank yeah, um, until 8.50, now it's 8.30. You've got 20 minutes to try this out. Choose one and let's see what happens. Good luck, guys.
Okay, everyone, we have roughly about five more minutes. So, yeah, let's see what you can email across.
so um okay it's exactly 8 50 p.m uh Kuala Lumpur time so basically that's about 20 minutes since um we started the work so Gustavo what is there any emails coming in hello hey, Joe. Joe. I'm Andres here. <laughs> yes, Andres, yes. Uh, we have received one email from Barbados. You want me from to Barbados. share the oh. screen? Wow. Yeah, hang on. Let me stop mine. All right. Let's see what we have here. Ooh, that's very nice. That's really nice. Falling down doesn't make you a playlist. Staying down does. Oh, that's that's a really nice quote. Yeah. So I like that. Um, wait, there was another one. Uh yeah. Kendia was asking if uh can use my other one. Okay, let's see. Wow, that was some that was really quick. Well done. Given that you you the time was halved in terms of um you know, the, the, the duration that you had. So, okay, let's see it on screen. Uh, ah, that's nice, perfect square, right? So actually, there's not much that, um, you know, that can be further improved here, but uh, however, right? Um, I can show you, uh, what I can say is, while the fonts are really, really nice, yeah? I'm gonna quickly give you an idea of what you can also do. Let me share uh, my screen very, very quickly. Yeah, let's share that because um, what I'm gonna do is I've already screenshot your uh, post just now, which is this. Um, so one thing that you can do, yeah, uh, is that first, I think the fonts, um, you can try to condense it a little bit because the, the spacing is, uh while it's a great it's a it's a good design yeah um but uh, to make it even more uh impactful i would recommend playing with um fonts that are highly condensed and I'll, I'll tell you what i mean like for instance if you were to insert the word falling right i'm going to insert text box and type falling right here right uh and use capital i like the fact that you use uh, uppercase because uppercase gives it a very strong um what do you call that a very strong feel as opposed to lower lowercase now when you use a font as uh, aggressive or as thick as uh, for instance aerial black right now another thing that you can do is you can actually go to the character spacing function here and you can actually instead of normal you can make it very tight which brings which makes all the letters come closer together in fact you can even go to more spacing and even condense it by maybe like nine yeah and giving it a very compressed look now the moment it comes closer like that and then, and then you put and then you arrange it like the way you have done where you know falling is one word uh, is one line and then doesn't make you a failure and all that so you can actually uh what i would do is falling and then i will say uh, the uh falling down all right falling doesn't make you a uh, right for, for example i'm going to cut it paste it as a picture so that i can shrink it like that right doesn't make you a and then we can write the word failure uh, as large as falling yeah and then the word staying down to be bigger than the rest as well so that you create that box look that i was uh showing an example of earlier yeah i think um that would uh make it really even more impactful yeah that's one one way uh to do it the other one uh, don't be too humble by putting your the, the logo of your noc logo really really small i'm sure you can actually make it a little bit more prominent yeah, a little bit bigger. And when you're putting in an image of the, the Olympic logo, I would highly recommend uh, getting the Olympic logo on Google if you can, yeah, Olympic logo, at the word PNG, so that when you grab the picture of the logo, um, it actually doesn't have that, uh, 
that white background that you have there. Yeah, because the moment it is without a background and it goes into your picture, it gives a more professional look. Yeah, so try that um, instead of putting an image that has a white background. But other than that, the choice of the choice of image, you know, tying back the word staying down and and, and falling and things like that, and um, that really nice look on a face. That's perfect. That that's a, a, a gorgeous attempt. So well done, and um, hope to see an improved version of that. Yeah. We have to use. Oh, really? Oh, dear. Okay. So if we have to use the, right. If you have to use, uh, it has to be on a white, then perhaps give it a little bit of space where, for example, right? Um, if, you, if you have to do it on a white, then perhaps create a, a framing for it, right? For example, create a framing for it and, and give it a little bit more room. Yeah. Instead of very being very close to the, uh, edges of that white space. So for example, right? Um, let me, for example, if you put it like this, right? Give it some breathing room around it rather than being all the way to the very end. Yeah, a good design practice to always give it a, a breathing space. So I'm sure, I'm very, very sure in the, in the Olympic rule book as well, there has to be what they call kerning or bleed areas that you have to, you know, put a little bit, yeah? So try not to put it all the, all the way towards the edges of that white box, yeah. But rather giving it a little bit of room, yeah. Great, but it's a good attempt. Love it. Okay. So we have right. a few more okay. tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, only only in the comment of here, like from what I learned today from you, mm -hmm. like following yeah. the eyesight. You you yeah. said better to put it on the bottom right corner so the logo mm -hmm. stays in your mind no that, that is, <laughs> yeah. a, is a tip yes. here yeah i have okay. an example of fiji where they did something with the logo with Ooh. the white how we sevens all right friendship respect excellence nice so that's actually quite cool as well um well and uh, let me <laughs> show you PG. another one <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's from Latvia. That's um, hang on, can we go back to the Fiji ah, one? Sure. Yeah. Sorry. Try to um, do it in a way, yeah, uh, where all three images make up the entire size of your image. So you may have to trim these uh, three images a little bit so that they're a little bit more wide and narrow. So if you can put them, put all three of them to completely fill up the square. And all these words like friendship, respect, and excellence sit on top of those pictures. Then it's going to be a lot more colorful. It's going to be a lot more vibrant as opposed to, you know, uh, making it this way. Yeah. So that's one of the things that we can do as well. Okay. Uh, Andres, next one. Yeah. We have another one from Latvia, which came out quite cool. Oh, I like this. This is really, really nice. Yeah. Uh, I like the fact that in the background, you put a little bit of texture. I think this is one of the the basic uh, templates PowerPoint has. Yeah, uh, I see that you've applied the, the remove background function. And I like the fact that you place your text um, right where the, the blurred version of the image is so that it doesn't fight for attention. But one thing you can do here from uh, the guy from Latvia is that um, each line of, nice job, each line of, uh, each row of sentence, yeah, if you can move it closer to each other, like for example, uh, allow me to share my screen very, very quickly. Yeah, uh, Andres. So I like that. I really, really love that design. But um, what I would really, really recommend is if I was to share screen now uh, and go back here. So what you did just now, the gap between each row of text, yeah, was a little bit distant. Yeah, so there was a lot of gap in between the lines. So if you were to move it together, yeah, move it closer like that, right? So one text box per line so that you can freely arrange it and put it much closer. And then you will have a more compressed look, um, which is going to make it even more awesome than it already is. Yeah. So that's one of the things that you can do immediately. Yeah. So, okay. Do we have any more? We have a last one from Palau. Okay, cool. Let's see. Ah, nice. It's not the destination, it's the journey, right? Okay, great. Yep. 
So again, same. I love the fact that we are all of us here today who's given the the, the attempts. Everybody has tried to play with the typography. It's great. Um, however, uh, I would give the same advice. It's a nice picture. It's a nice background and all that. Um, the way we arrange the text will determine whether you know uh, to get to the next level. So the keywords that we want to highlight here is two, right? The two words: destination and the journey. So perhaps the way we arrange it uh, is that the words uh, "it's not the" is a single line, small, and then just line number two is just the word destination, which we make really, really big and really, really prominent, right? And next is uh, again. It's the will be in a smaller font, and then the journey will be uh, following the size of the destination word. So we give really big focus on those two words, right? And well, and then it's also about the choice of fonts. I, I can see it from here that uh, you use Calibri, which is a standard one. Now, do try to use, uh, if you want more impact, I like, I like the word journey though. The word journey, I think that's Arial Black, if I'm not mistaken. So that looks great when the moment is thick. Yeah, so. Great, that's a good uh, that's a good design right there. Well done. Yeah. Okay. So was that it, um, Andres? Any more coming in? Yeah, I have one more. I just need to open it. Just one yeah. second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys work faster than I do, man. I mean, I I'll find it difficult to do that in twenty. The fact that you guys can that's uh, pretty amazing. Well, so maybe we have one I... from Lao. Oh, from Lao. That's awesome. Let's see. Ah, yep. Nothing is impossible. The word itself says I'm possible. I like that, right? That's really, really cool. Yeah, I like the picture of the running. So maybe for this particular, the picture of the running one, maybe if you were to try to use the remove background function so that you can, you can keep the guy in the red shirt and you know the hurdle underneath him, but remove everything else so you can put him in a nice colored background, a plain colored background so you can just see the person. I think that's going to make it really, really stand out because uh, the picture itself, there's quite a few imperfections there from uh, the bags and the, the stuff at the back and the girl resting in the background. And think that at the moment you clean it up by removing everyone and then putting it in a much cleaner background effect, then it's going to be a lot more awesome as well. Yeah, so good. Great, guys. Awesome. So would that be it for now? Yeah, that's it for now. <laughs> okay. So great. Uh, I'm going to share screen again because uh, we're going to do our closing very soon. But then again, guys, for what you guys have done in the given time, I think that's fantastic. You have the basics and the essence there. The intentions are there. Um, the initiative is there. So I'm hoping to see the at least... 40 more coming in through the emails later for me to review. And, you know, uh, most of you, I think some of you will get hold of that infographics, right? So um, the review is done. Now, I just want to close it by, by recapping everything that we've learned, not just today, but, you know, three months ago. So now you understand the elements that's required in, um, you know, when designing uh, a layout or a content, you know, the fundamentals and all that. You know, yeah, I, I've seen, again, I've seen good use of um, text arrangements, the attempts at typography designs and all that. I think everybody can agree now that that's really, really key, you know, to have it a, a box, nice, compressed, uh, packed look like that, right? And then uh, everybody was um, choosing the PowerPoint, uh, not using the PowerPoint color colors at all. So a lot are starting to use the eyedrop function and all that and incorporating the Olympic colors as well. Right. Um, next one is, of course, the designing the infographic placeholders. I'm sure at some point you guys will be putting all the PowerPoint shapes together to form your own um, placeholder designs. I think, well, we've already seen the, the editing that you've done on your pictures, combining your backgrounds and your foregrounds and, and elements and all that. So you guys know that function exists. Use it to its fullest extent. And uh, perhaps the only thing that we've not seen so far is the videos so i hope to see that in uh, in the future and then uh, today of course you know in terms of design templates you know how to use the color schemes um you know the placement of all, all your contents and the kind of backgrounds that you can use right the animation techniques i hope you guys are going to explore this once you get hold of the video uh, the recording of this session so that you can see how i did that moving gear earlier 
hope to see some nice uh, movements and, and video content coming up as well as the dashboard. Remember when I did a quick demo on how we use just a normal pie chart, right? For us to use a, a design that we can put for numbers and statistics and all that. So I hope to see some of that coming out as well. And with that, guys, thank you so much. We've concluded the second session of uh, my PowerPoint sharing. Hopefully, it has been as, as insightful and fun as it was the first. Um, if uh, Hopefully, you know, you guys are going to push out some really, really good looking content in the very near future using plain PowerPoint, which people thought was not doable. So with that, yeah. I will pass the... Yeah. You know the, the 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 session back to the organizers, Andres and um, fantastic, Joe. Thanks yes. again uh, for the for this very nice session. I think it was very productive uh, to everyone. It's a lot of uh, uh, content, but again, the recording you you just go there review all the tricks and the tips, and I think practice will make perfection. Like, of course, to get to Joe's level, he didn't do it from one day. There was a lot of uh, mistakes on the way and to his level. So I think it's a matter of us uh, practicing to, to get there. But I uh, think, think we really achieved what we wanted uh, with your participation here on take a tool that everyone has, uh, like PowerPoint, and make it uh, the way to create a very nice uh, graphic design for social media which in the end is our objective here uh, in this uh, part of the ANOC Digital Accelerator Program. So again, thank you very, very much. Uh, we look forward to receive the designs of the participants. And uh, as uh, Joe mentioned, he will pick the top 10 and he will share the free template, which you'll be able to use not only on your social media, but on your corporate uh, presentations. So I think it's, it's a great value, so please do uh, put some effort and send it over and uh, the top 10 will win it. And before we finish, I would like to ask everyone to uh, open their cameras. We're going to take a group picture. Ooh, nice. Let me stop my sharing first. Love that. Gustavo, would it be okay for me to share this screenshot on my own Facebook? Yes, yes, of course. We're going to do a little story on this and you can share it as well for sure. Okay, great. So nice if I can, if everyone can open their cameras and yeah. put on a nice smile, we're going to take a, a print screen here. Look your best, people, because I've got about uh, 28,000 followers on my Facebook page, so you'll be visible across 28,000 Malaysians. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Andres, up to you there. You come on. Yeah, just one more second <laughs> as I'm waiting for some more to come online or show your faces. Come on, guys, don't be shy. Wow. Awesome. Get to see faces behind the words, behind the behind the writings on the chat windows. Great. Cool. We're Hi, done, Andres. <laughs> We're done, Andres. No. Yes, we, we are many thanks. Uh, Fantastic. To our, to everyone, yeah, I see some more examples coming in. So if you want, we can also share this with you. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. So thanks again to Joe and also to the uh, interpreters who are always here uh, helping us out. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank, Thank you. you. Really appreciate it.